Hey there, Nick Jatakis here. In this video, we're gonna go over how to dynamically call a function in a shell script. This will be POSIX compliant, so it will work with regular shell as well as bash. Now, there's a whole bunch of different use cases that you might wanna use this for, but I had one come up recently where I was creating a little command line script, and one of the things that you do is you pass in an application name, and inside this script, I wanted to output a different environment file with different values depending on which application name was being passed in. Now, the script did all sorts of other things, but you know, that was one component of the script. And uh, yeah, let's quickly go over a little demo script here that I put together where we're not using a dynamic function call. We'll go over it really quick here, and then we'll refactor this one to use a dynamic uh, function call here. So in this case here, you know, we can just run the script here, pop, pop in some type of application name, foo, whatever in this case, and then we'll just cut out the env file that this thing produces here. And we can see foo, you know, something, and then we have like another var here, right? This is if the application name is foo. And we'll go into more details in a second here. I just want to show you there's different output for different application names. You know, there's one for bar and there's one for baz. And we can see that we are getting different contents here depending on what application name that you pass in. And then also in this case here too, where if we tried to pass in like some app name that doesn't exist here, we actually get an error here because uh, there is nothing to output there. Uh, but yeah, okay. So if you take a look here at this script, pretty simple, right? We capture the application name as the first argument here. Then we just call this function create environment or create env here. And I just set up a variable to be like, okay, cool. Well, if the application name is foo, then we just use a here doc here. I've done videos about this one in the past, so feel free to check that out. If you wanna know more about the details, like how to assign a multi-line string here to a variable, but in this case, yeah, so when it's uh, foo, we do these environment variables. And then also, if you know if the application's bar, then we do these. And then also, if again, if it's baz, then we do these instead. And then I also have a little bit of protection down here too to make sure that we have uh, something in the contents variable because it is empty by default. So as long as we have something, then it's actually going to take this variable that we have contents here and just write it out to an env file. Now, there's a whole bunch of different ways you can solve this, even without using dynamic function calls. You know, in this very simple case here, you can imagine, well, maybe you can have different env files on disk, like, you know, env.foo, env.bar, or whatever, and then you can just... Um, you know, have that available in your script to call without having a whole bunch of logic. But, you know, in the real script, it was quite a bit more complicated here too, because like, you know, these values were actually reading from variables that were defined in the script here. You know, it wasn't just static content that we see here. Um, so yeah, okay, let's go over how we could refactor this script to use dynamic function call. And it's actually surprisingly uh, easy here. You know, it's almost like not even noteworthy of making a video, but, you know, I have done videos in the past where I've gone over how to call dynamic variables or assign them. And I figured, you know what, this is like a very similar use case, but applied to functions. It's not bad to have, you know, different uh, use case videos come up for basically doing the same thing, but in a different context. But yeah, in this case, okay, what can we do? Well, we can uh, start by creating a couple of different functions here and let's name these functions to be what they actually are. So in this case, you know, create like foo env here, right? And then we can do the same thing. And then we'll do the, you know, we can actually go with, uh, bar as well, right? Because we are going to create three different functions here, basically. So for each application that we have, and then we'll do one more for Baz as well. Uh, I cannot see my keyboard there. Okay, cool. All right. And then after we have those set up, then we can actually just start doing what we need to do here. In this case, we are not going to even bother with a contents variable. Uh, we're just going to output the variables directly. So what we could do though is, uh, yeah, we can just say we want to cat here. And then what do we want to do? You know, we'll use our here doc here as well. And then I'll just, I'm just going to grab these two from down here. I'll cut them. Why not? And uh, what we actually need to do though is redirect that out to an env file. Uh, and you know, the other video I did around here docs and multi-line strings, like outputting to files of variables, blah, blah, blah. It goes into more details on how all of that works here. Um, but yeah, we can basically just do that. And then we can do the same thing for bar as well. And then the same thing for baz. And then of course, you know, we'll go in here and change uh, the environment variables themselves to have a different thing here. And then the last one is down here. Cool, that's nice. And then here's the last one. And uh, yeah, we can get rid of this create env function now and all these if conditions go away, which is quite nice here. And yeah, then what we can do is basically, you know, the whole premise of this video here where we can literally just uh, reference the variable like this. And, you know, we want to make shell check happy, which we'll run against here in a second. So we will wrap it in quotes here. But yeah, that's literally it. So like if we go here and now rerun uh, this command here, let's say the one for foo, and we'll get the same outputs as before you know, and then we'll do the same one for bar and then we'll do the same one for bass. And we can see 
that we do have the different outputs here depending on which application. So the functionality of the script, the usage of the script didn't change at all. We just refactored it here to have a couple separate functions here. And then we dynamically call these functions depending on what variable is passed in over here. And you know, I kind of like this quite a bit more than the first solution because we now have different concerns being handled in an isolated way, right? We have these individual nice little functions here that all they do is, you know, they cut out an env file with the variables here. And we're no longer mixing in all those different conditions as well as the contents of the file. Now, in this example, it's pretty simple, right? We just have three conditions, you know, three different apps. And then we also have only two environment variables here, but you can imagine in the real script where, you know, there's like eight applications with many different environment variables, having that one big function with all those if, and if conditions in there, that became a little bit uh, unwieldy, right? It's a little bit difficult to uh, navigate that. And in this case, yeah, I find it a little bit easier to be like, okay, I'm dealing with the bar app. Let me just look at this function. All it does is one little thing, just outputs the file. Here's what I need to look at. I don't even need to worry about up here or down here as well. So yeah, I think that's a, a nice little way to maybe simplify some code here. So with that said, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below and uh, I'll do my best to answer all of them. And if you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up because it really does help a lot. Thanks a lot for watching and I will see you in the next video.